Hello everyone, I'm Carolyn Martin and I will be hosting today's PNR Rendezvous session. Over the past year or so, you have probably been seeing some announcements from us about the National Institutes of Health All of Us Research Program, as well as its partnership with the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. Today's session is an opportunity for you to learn more about the All of Us Research Program, as well as how libraries can be involved. I will introduce our guest in just a bit, but first I would like to review a few tips on how to use our webinar system. You've already noticed that you're probably, um, that you've been muted and that anyone joining this webinar today will then have an opportunity later in the session to um, have yourselves unmuted and ask questions and comments. But for now, during the presentation, we ask that you go ahead and put those comments and questions in the chat box and um, we will answer those uh, later in the session. If you would like access to the closed captioning, the link is there in the chat box for you to use. We would appreciate it if you would take some time now to fill out a survey for us. The link is there in the chat box. Just a couple of questions are being asked uh, and nothing personal. This is so we have a better idea of who we are reaching in each of these sessions. So I'll go ahead and give you a few seconds to fill that out before we move on. For attending today's PNR Rendezvous, either live or through the recording, you can get an MLA Medical Library Association CE credit. If you would like to receive this credit, we would ask that you please stay on the webinar and at the end we will provide you with some information on that. And please keep in mind that we would appreciate your taking the evaluation whether you want the CE or not. Our first presenter would have been Michelle Spatz, who is our All of Us Coordinator for the NNLM PNR office, but she was called away for her civic duties. So we have our PNR Associate Director, Kathy Burroughs, here to fill in. And we will also be hearing from Leanne Gelsky, who is the Director of the Haley Public Library in Haley, Idaho. Welcome to both of you, and before we begin our presentation, our presenters have some questions for you, the audience. So Maddie, please bring up those questions um, in the poll. And um, Le Leanna, I'll go ahead and have you uh, ask those questions. Good afternoon, everyone. I have a couple of questions for you, and I will be addressing them later in my presentation. The first question is, to what degree have you ever wondered about the future of your health or that of a loved one? If you could go ahead and respond. Your choices are all day, every day, once per week, twice per month, once per month, or once per year. And the other poll should be um, available too. All right, and the second question is, do you know the meaning of precision medicine? Absolutely, I know what that is. What? Maybe not at all. Mm -hmm. So the responses are pouring in. Looks like already the majority of people have finished the poll, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer here before I close it because it can still see some movement. Okay, I'm going to close that poll now. So hopefully you should, um, you can see the results now, right? I do. So our first question, it looks like the majority, majority of everyone thinks about their health or that of a loved one once per week followed by twice per month, and then all day, every day. And do you know what precision medicine means? Well, it's a tie between absolutely and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go over that um, a little bit later in greater detail. Thank you. OK, next poll. OK, well, this is Kathy Burroughs. And I wanted to know, have you heard of the NNLM Community Engagement Network? 
yes or no? There's not even a maybe on this. It's just yes <laughs> or no. <laughs> okay, it looks like pretty much everyone has responded, so. Um. Okay, so it looks like the majority have heard about it. Um, and then that actually it's sort of almost half and half. Most have, but a lot of a lot of you haven't, and some of you haven't answered. So we will definitely talk about that. In fact, I'm going to be introducing that. I'm going to give you an introduction to our new partnership that we have with the NNLM and the National Institutes of Health All of Us Research Program. I'm Kathy Burroughs, and Associate Director of the NNLM in the Pacific Northwest region. And I'm delighted to give this presentation today on behalf of Michelle Spots, who was called away, as um, Carolyn said, and she is actually in jury duty now. So um, happy to do this for Michelle. So the All of Us Research Program is a precision medicine initiative, part of an emerging approach for disease treatment and prevention that takes into account individual differences in lifestyle, environment, and biological makeup. It aims to build a nationwide community of one million or more participants from all walks of life, including groups that have been historically underrepresented in biomedical research. Participants share different types of information on their lifestyle, biology, and environment. These data, stripped of obvious identifiers, will be accessible to researchers whose findings may lead to more tailored treatments and prevention strategies in the future. The All of Us Research Program is a longitudinal study and is funded for 10 years. And to, to learn more, I invite you to visit their website, which is joinallofus.org. Now I'd like to turn to the NNLM's partnership with the All of Us Research Program. These are the primary goals of our partnership with All of Us. A major aim is to increase the capacity of library staff to improve health literacy by building the consumer health skills of librarians and also supporting libraries in their community health programming, outreach, and health information resources and services. And as you can see, the other two goals support all of us as well. NNLM's Community Engagement Center directs our work in support of our All of Us partnership through its community engagement network. So each region in the NNLM has a staff member dedicated to the community engagement network, which is Michelle Spots for the Pacific Northwest region. This is the community engagement network site. We're sharing resources here that you can use to support health programming, digital literacy, and developing community partnerships, along with free training to help you develop your health literacy information and outreach skills. In support of our efforts, our community engagement network provides professional development and training opportunities and consultations through our site visits to library partners and through offering many free training webinars, conference presentations, and workshops. The Community Engagement Network also supports the Consumer Health Information Specialization by funding the application fee along with creating and, cr and offering free classes to earn the credits needed to obtain the CHIS. The Community Engagement Network also promotes funding opportunities for projects centered in libraries, advancing health literacy through technology, outreach, and programming efforts. And we make community connections and provide health literacy program support through mentorship with our expert staff and the vast array of our NNLM PNR community partners. To support health literacy and promote community engagement, we created the NNLM Reading Club. This is an off-the-shelf program as well as a program in a box 
which consists of a selection of three book titles in support of a national health observance. Our most recent collection is for February, American Heart Month. The Reading Club offers everything needed to host a book club discussion on each of the featured titles, along with the option to apply for and receive the book club materials for one book title as a program in a box. And speaking of reading, NNLM is partnering with the Collaborative Summer uh, Library Program, or CSLP. Many of you are likely familiar with CSLP, the library consortium that creates an extensive manual of summer reading program and promotional ideas for early literacy, children, teens, and adults on a common theme that it shares with participating public libraries. This includes artwork such as logos and program scripts with supply lists for activities and crafts. NNLM's 2019 Health Program Guide on the theme, A Universe of Stories, is available on our website, which you see here. I'm pleased to share that our 2020 health-themed ideas will be fo folded into the CSLP 2020 Program Guide, so it'll be a one-stop shopping center, so to speak. <laughs> We are also partnering with Libraries Transform, the American Library Association's public, health, public awareness campaign to raise an understanding of how libraries support health literacy in their communities. We've co-created a health literacy toolkit for libraries to use as they promote health literacy. Some of Libraries Transform resources can be ordered for free from our NNLM PNR website. These are two examples of the eight new health literacy because statements for ALA's 2018 campaign, which released, were released in October, Health Literacy Month. <clears throat> and NNLM PNR recently partnered with the ALA Office for Diversity, Literacy, and Outreach Services and the Public Library Association to hold a pre-conference workshop on implicit bias health disparities and health literacy at the ALA Midwinter Conference held in Seattle. The purpose of this pre-conference was to raise awareness of implicit biases connection to health equity and to deepen understanding of health literacy as a tool that librarians can use in addressing health equity within their communities. PLA will be offering follow-up communications and additional information on this important topic with its membership through 2019. Finally, NNLM's Community Engagement Network is working with libraries and community partners to invite them to host the All of Us Journey when it's in their area. The All of Us Journey exhibit and the All of Us Mobile Education and Enrollment Center visit, visits communities nationwide to raise awareness about the All of Us Research Program. Both exhibits feature hands-on activities for visitors to learn about research, precision medicine, and the opportunity to enroll in all of us. We're delighted the journey will visit in the Pacific Northwest region this summer, which is a perfect segue to our guest speaker, Leanne Gelski, director of the Haley Public Library in Haley, Idaho. Welcome, Leanne. I'll hand it over to you now, and I'm just so delighted that you're able to be here and tell us your story. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here and to be able to share our experience with you. Um, I was contacted through NNLM to consider being a participant in the All of Us um, journey because we've had a long-standing uh, partnership with them. Uh, they actually did some funding for us for a health conference that we had a few years ago in our, in our town. So thank you again for having me. Um, this is a picture of me and with some information about myself, but I am holding a picture of Nettie Mallory in this uh, photo. She was our first librarian and we are celebrating our centennial year this year, so we're very excited um, to be celebrating that and I just wonder what Miss Nettie would have thought of where uh, libraries are today and all of the wonderful things that we are doing for our communities. 
I wanted to share my story with you of why I was motivated and, and wanting to be a part of the All of Us project. This is a picture of my grandmother. She suffered from Lewy body dementia, which is a type of progressive dementia that leads to a decline in thinking, reasoning, and independent function because of abnormal microscopic deposits that damage brain cells over time. There are no treatments that can slow or stop the brain cell damage caused by Lewy body dementia. Current strategies focus on just assisting with um, the symptoms. Lewy body dementia gets worse over time and it does shorten lifespan. And I, again, it was my hope that by participating in the All of Us project that there will someday, someday be a cure for this horrible disease. Others who have suffered from this include Estelle Getty from the Golden Girls, Robin Williams, and Dick Clark. So when referring back to the question that you were previously asked, uh, you, you were asked to analyze how much time you spend thinking about yourself or a loved one. So in my response, in regards to my grandmother when I was helping to take care of her, it would have been all day, every day. It was exhausting. At the present time, I would answer with probably once or twice a month that I now worry about the health of someone. Uh, um, so it's hard. It's hard when you're struggling to help someone and you're concerned about their health. Our mission at the Haley Public Library focuses on not only high interest materials and information, but we provide programs and technologies that encourage lifelong learning, discovery, and enrichment. So you can see that our mission definitely supports programs that are offered through uh, NNLM as well as the All of Us Project. Librarians like to think outside the box. I included a small cartoon here for you, but as public libraries grew in communities across the United States, they focused on creating better access for patrons to library resources. This included innovative thinking about how access could be made easier for patrons in physically isolated communities and how libraries could better serve communities that were isolated from them physically. Librarians, thinking more broadly about how to bring books directly to the people, develop new programs aimed at previously untapped audiences who might find it too difficult to visit library branches. These included on-site libraries for workers and their families in unique places like railroad cars and factories, as well as library services in hospitals and prisons. Because of programs funded by communities, as well as the Works Progress Administration, libraries were bringing books to the community by foot, boat, horseback, and the increasingly popular bookmobile. In times of national struggle, like the Great Depression and World Wars, libraries have mobilized to fulfill their public service missions. So I'm thinking about the history of the Haley Public Library. We did not deliver by horseback. I love this next picture. Health does happen in libraries. If you can't come to the library, the library will just come to you. So other ways that the Haley Public Library has presented health information has been through suicide prevention community events. We have an age-friendly committee here in the Valley. We hosted and participated in a Discover Health Fair. We provide mental health first aid, and we've participated with Your Health Idaho. Libraries today offer displays on how to, on promoting health awareness, excuse me. Presentations are also offered to address health issues and awareness. Libraries are changing. Technology has had a huge impact on our world. Libraries, though, are not just about books. Libraries and librarians are respected. The information we share is vital. What are some of your community needs? In my town, we are concerned about mental health and suicide prevention. 
our partnerships are, are valued. The values of partnerships include partnerships between public libraries and community health stakeholders that address disparities in access to health information and services, access to and meaningful use of information, and public, as, as I said, public libraries are trusted. And our help can occur in many forms, such as an informal point of, a, of user assistance, training from a library staff member or a volunteer, or again, programming with local partner organizations. Which brings me to the All of Us journey. It was a perfect fit for us because we are focused on health aware awareness. Our community has many members who are very fit and health conscious, but this brought a new and interesting level of interaction. Most of our patrons have access to the technological components, but having that one-on-one -on -one interaction was very valuable. Plus, it was cutting edge and hip. So the application process was fairly easy. Pardon me, I have to take a drink of water. I'm coming off of a cold. And I don't want to cough, so bear with, my, bear with me and my voice. <coughs> Excuse me. Our first point of contact was from Michelle at the NNLM, All of Us Community Engagement Center at the University of Washington. There was a link to an online application, and applications had to be submitted eight weeks in advance. Then we worked to determine our dates, our volunteers, our event times, determining our location, and researching whether or not we needed any special permits from our city. So the footprint for the exhibit itself presented some challenges for us. It was made much easier by working with great people, Michelle and her staff, as well as our city and, and employees, and a very low tape measure. So the space requirements are listed on the website. There is a space for a stage, and it also is ADA compliant. Me. This slide, the plan. so we needed to pay for the event, the location and the permits, our volunteers and our promotions. And you can see under those what was required for each of those. We were also concerned about the weather. This is a slide of the actual weather we had during the week of October 23rd through the 26th. The week before, our temperatures had been in the mid-60s. And so the change for that week exhibit was here was shockingly cold. And we received a steady downpour on the first day of the event. The crew, though, that was with the exhibit they were out dancing on the sidewalk in the rain, <laughs> trying to bring awareness to what they were working on while we were also uh, promoting and prompting people to visit while they were inside the library. This copy of our actual schedule for the week, um, they rolled into town with the um, setup on Monday, and they had everything ready to go first thing Tuesday morning. Um, because of our rural location, we had a challenge with FedEx. There was uh, some concern that they would not be picked after one as their hours are limited. But right before the event, it was confirmed that samples could be delivered to FedEx later in the afternoon each day, which meant that um, 
the interaction and the signing up part could be uh, held longer in the day. Our community is more active midday, so the additional afternoon hours worked well for us. Um, the 9 o'clock and 8 o'clock start times were challenging because most people in our valley are not really up and moving before 9. <laughs> so um, we had to be mindful of that. This is a, a post on our Facebook page of uh, what we were trying to promote. Um, we tried to concentrate information, but the first um, posts that we had were a little bit more lengthy just to try and get that information out. Our community loves social media, and this, this had a great response rate. So I think it's very important that you consider what your marketing methods are uh, that work best for your community and make sure that you include those. We had great feedback from our patrons. And Gigi actually gave me a quote. She said, you handed the choice of taking charge of my health to me. So then she felt that there were no more excuses. Um, and there was actually a great press release, in, or excuse me, an article written in our local newspaper. And it featured this photo of some of the staffers that were here. Um, and this is actually from in front of our library. You can see the library in the back. It's the brick building. And I think this photo was probably taken later in the week because even though there were storm clouds, it was not pouring and the sun was actually shining. So this is on the south side of our building, which is actually the main entrance to the library. And we took all eight of the parking spaces out in front of the building for the uh, kiosk, which uh, opens up it's interactive as well as the uh, big bus that you can see more towards the left side where people would actually go in and register if they so chose to participate in the program. These are some of our facts uh, that include the day of, the, uh, of each event and then how many people uh, were engaged on the onboard trailer and then how many of them completed uh, fully completed enrollment, number of accounts created, as well as other onboard uh, enrollment. So we had some really good engagement. I also can see from this that towards later in the week, more people uh, wanted to be engaged on the onboard trailer. Word had gotten out by that point, and people could see it from the street. Plus, our community tends to sometimes procrastinate things. So they didn't, um, they wanted to wait try it out a little bit before they actually jumped on. So. so what is precision medicine? That was another question that was asked of you at the beginning of this. Precision medicine is a revolutionary approach for disease prevention and treatment that takes into account individual differences in lifestyle, environment, and biology. Kathy spoke a little bit about this in her presentation as well. The All of Us Research Program is a key element of the Precision Medicine Initiative. Through advances in research, technology, and policies that empower patients, the PMI, or the Precision Medicine Initiative, will enable a new era of medicine in which researchers, healthcare providers, and patients work together to develop, develop their own individualized care. There were some community concerns that were expressed to us that I wanted to also share with you. Questions about data storage, how will it all be stored? Will my information be misused or is it secure? What is the relevance of the data? Is it an adequate representation of the population? Who owns the data? How will the government involvement affect research? Will agencies work cooperatively or competitively? And of course, costs. Anytime we had questions like this in the library, we made sure that we walked them outside and had them engage with those staffers that were prepared for these questions more adequately than we were. Um, but I thought it was relevant to show and, and talk a little bit about those concerns. 
The other thing that we did in response to that was to make sure that we shared the core values of precision medicine. In looking through these, you can see that they're very similar to librarianship as well. We're open to all, and we appreciate the diversity of all. We're partners, and we trust through transparency. They have access to their information. It will be used for broadly. Security and privacy are of the highest importance. And hopefully, the program will be a catalyst for positive change in research. So after touching upon some of these core values, our patrons were very receptive and much better um, at engaging. So that is my presentation. I, I do, I'm open for questions if you would like. Thank you so much, Leanne and Kathy. I'm sure this presentation um, has helped to, to clarify um, some questions that people might have had. And I think uh, even better that it brought awareness to the All of Us Research Program and how libraries can be involved. So like Leanne said, feel free uh, to ask your questions. If you would like to be unmuted, um, there's a little hand icon just above the chat box. If you click on that, uh, Maddie will unmute you. Otherwise, you're free to um, write your questions or comments in the chat box directly. I did want to add, um, I think Michelle had uh, sent um, some information that the journey itself will be in the Pacific Northwest region in, uh, from July to September. And um, sites can apply to host the journey just as um, Leanne and the Haley Public Library did. So if you're interested in that, you um, are free to contact Michelle and her email is there on that. Uh, screenshot and we will um, you can ask your questions and uh, post your interest in that and send it to her I see a couple of questions um, Leanne did you partner with any outside groups for this uh, event with the with the all of us journey you know, we, we did not, um, but I did work with sharing a bunch of information uh, with our interagency group, which is uh, a bunch of community partners from the local hospital to health and welfare. Um, we meet on a quarterly basis and talk about upcoming events, and it was heavily promoted. Uh, with those other partnering organizations just through word of mouth, but we didn't actually have a specific program in conjunction with all of them. And um, we have another question too. Uh, do you, they want to know if we have a, um, a state participation goal. Uh, and I don't know if NNLM is considering that. Um, Kathy, I don't know if you want to address that or if we can also send that question on to Michelle as well. I know with the overall participation, it is a national thing through the National Institutes of Health, um, which we in NLM does not have any, um, we're not involved in recruiting uh, participants. We're just bringing awareness. Yeah, I, thank you. This is Kathy, yes. I'm sorry, I was muted there for a minute. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, uh, that, is, um, that is correct, Carolyn. We are uh, partnering with uh, libraries to increase awareness of all of us research program, but not asking libraries to do anything about recruitment. Now this uh, All of Us Journey uh, mobile center and exhibit program that Leanne talked about is a great opportunity to partner um, and bring this kind of a um, event to your communities and therefore sort of heighten the awareness of your library's involvement and um, 
support for healthy communities, uh, but it isn't a, a recruitment mode kind of thing. Um, so, and as far as state goals for participation that all of this research program has, I do not know of such a, a way that they are tracking it in that sense. Um, it is really trying to uh, be as diverse as possible around the country. Thank you, Kathy. And then there's another question. Could the exhibit possibly be held indoors or is it only outside? And I'm not sure if you know that, Leanne, but I'll, I'll give that question to you. Well, we had actually discussed it because the exhibit came from Cody Wyoming prior to arriving here. And Cody had experienced snow. And it's not unheard of for Haley to receive snow in October. So we did have a plan B, uh, but we needed to have access to uh, rooms and a restroom inside that could be private for the registering um, and for those tests that are done inside the mobile unit. Um, but the interactive part is really all located in that kiosk that opens up when the staffers are there and it's very interactive and I don't know that there is an option for that to be held inside. Um, I, I have visited one of the stops for the journey and that kiosk is, is enclosed um, with some doors that open out. So there is some protection from outdoor elements. Um, so that can be kind of considered kind of semi indoors. Um, and I know that they had a stop at, um, I think the Tacoma Dome for an event. So in that sense, it was indoors, but that was for a big, big women's health event. So I'm not sure with a public library how that would work. Uh, but Michelle and her staff were great at trying to figure out and assist with options. So it worked out fine, even though we did have some inclement weather. And even if we had have received snow, I think it would have been fine as well because of the setup of the mobile unit and the kiosks, or the kiosk being somewhat covered, as you said, Carolyn. I think um, I think it's pretty easy, even if you have inclement weather. Uh, someone else is asking if uh, you had a budget to support this visit, and um, Kathy mentioned that the journey will assist with some cost, but did you, uh, Leanne, have um, a special budget to support any additional costs? Well, Michelle and her staff, again, were great in um, assisting. I can't remember who we spoke with directly about the advertising, but we supplied them with who we used on a local level for advertising, the local newspaper and some other apps, and they assisted with that. So really, the only cost that we had would have been similar to any other program that we would have had internally where you know, we would share flyers, and again, I shared those with the interagency group, uh, our other partners. So it really, there was really no above and beyond, if you will, other than the advertising we would normally do for a program. Yeah, yeah this is Kathy Ann. I, I would say that um, the All of Us Research Program staff are, are really set up to really provide that community support, as you're mentioning, for promotion, et cetera. And then uh, the RML office, we can provide uh, comp, you know, sort of the other costs that you might want to have for uh, programming that you would do that would complement what's going on. And so we have these mini outreach awards that are on our funding opportunities page that might help with that kind of thing. Um, but you could, you don't have to go into another programming event. It could be all kind of within what the All of Us is bringing to you. Um, so it, it really is up to you to name how big of a, a program you want to put on in addition to what's happening with the journey bus. Uh, here's another one. Can, participant, can participants opt out of the DNA part of the data collection? Yes, absolutely. Participants can do as much or as little uh, interaction and engagement as they feel comfortable with. And you can change your mind later, which is nice.
Did that answer your question, Stephanie? And I would also say that um, on the um, All of Us webpage that we had posted earlier, there's a lot of information that talks about um, how participants can, how much they can participate or when they can opt out and all the uh, privacy issues. Those are all addressed there um, to quite a great uh, length. And when you sign up, there is a long, uh, rather long sign up, but it also stops to help people who are signing up to stop and think about how much, you know, what their, what kind of information they are signing up for um, in participation. So it's a way of trying to really get people to understand what all is involved if they participate. Is there something that can be sent to Alaska? Now, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah that, the scheduling and where the journey is is uh, really handled by the All of Us Research Program staff. Uh, we can definitely find out whether that's coming up. I, it's, it's not, Alaska's not on the schedule for this um, coming, you know, 2019 uh, journey schedule in the Pacific Northwest, but we can find out. And Le uh, Leanne, would you do anything differently when you uh, hosted the journey? Well, now that I'm familiar with it, <laughs> it needs to come back. <laughs> um, I would like to have offered some other programs in conjunction with it. I think that would have been nice and, and wish that we would have been a little bit more um, assertive in that area. I think that if we could have had also some volunteers inside the library to help with questions, almost like a docent, uh, I think that would have been helpful so that staff didn't have to allocate time in trying to answer questions. Mm -hmm. But I really like the location that we chose, we're downtown. I think that that's really imperative that people, because it's something different to see this big, um, bus and kiosk sitting out on the corner and people are just curious by nature. So uh, maybe tap into that a little bit more. Uh, if it would have been summer and people would have been more on the street with the tourists in our town, I think that would have drawn in more people, but I couldn't change the timing of it. So. And I think someone else is asking that if you are participating personally and that it's great to have local spokespeople. Yes, I am participating. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm hoping that by sharing what I can through my help that maybe someday, who knows, maybe I'll have an impact on helping to eradicate some of these horrible diseases that we have right now. And I, I support the advancement of health and, and technology and was excited to do it, so. So Leanne, I have a question. Uh, what do you think was the best thing about the library's participation in the All of Us journey? I think that it really helped to support the library as being seen as something that's relevant with relevant, important information. And I, like I said, it was cutting edge and hip. Um, people were really excited to see that it was something that we had here at the library, especially in a town where such a resort area and community where a lot of the affluency for um, special programs is more so in those areas where there is more wealth. And being Mid-Valley, where our library is located, I think it really helped um, for people to look at libraries in a different way and know that, that we are supporting uh, health and, and health literacy, not just come in and find a book. So um, even though that's great too, but I just think that it was really a way to kind of showcase a partnership as well. And speaking of that, did you, how did you get your library tr trustees on board with hosting the journey? Oh, that wasn't hard. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was easy. Um, oh. No, our board is great and they're very, um, I try to always 
teach them and show them different things that libraries are doing across the country and to show them that we had this opportunity and uh, at first they were like, what? What is this? <laughs> but once I was able to really bring some information, there's so much information on, on that website that yeah. it was really helpful in, in telling the story of what we were trying to do. Right. Well, and do you think that there is a change in perception either by the library staff or by the, the public or the people that you are um, serving, that you're having conversations with about uh, precision medicine? Did, is there any changes in perception about it? I think so, yes. And I think because our community tends, again, to be very um, in tune and in touch with advancements, I, I think that some people were surprised that it was at the library. I think they would have thought it would be at our local hospital, St. Luke's, or, or at maybe the YMCA instead of at the library. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great point. Well, they are so supportive. They're really, the, all of us research program staff are, they have great um, ideas and great uh, support that they provide communities. So it's, it's been a, a lovely partnership that, that we're able to have with NNLM. NNLM ha has with NIH all of us research program and happy to bring that to our regions. Um, so this has been a nice program. <laughs> And it's going on. It's extending for another, should be a 10-year program. And that's really exciting. I hope that we can continue at least offering other information um, through that 10 years to the people in our community. Right. So do we have any other questions or comments from our audience? Um, Leanne, I um, well, here's some. Uh, are there other libraries or contacts from libraries that have been involved that are willing to share ideas or suggestions? I know that in our area, it's so far just been us. Yeah, and we, and you are the first um, in the Pacific Northwest region. Um, as far as a library uh, hosting it, although it's been, as Carolyn mentioned, the bus has been through other parts of the of the states here. But since it is coming back and it's going to be scheduled between July and September, we know that several other libraries um, are already expressing interest in uh, Montana and Oregon at least, um, and I think and also Washington. So we'll be getting the word out as far as where, where that's coming and when they're going to be, be there. They are still in the scheduling phase at this point. Um, as far as they're coming back, I know that they will be coming back over the next few years. Um, so I do encourage you, if I, maybe Maddie could put in the information in the chat on, um, well, basically just contact Michelle Spots and she would be able to get you in touch with the All of Us Research Program scheduling staff. Yes, I think that would be a great um, suggestion to go ahead and contact Michelle. Yeah. I see Darlene has posted a couple of article links, or at least one article link regarding um, the research program, and uh, you're free to look at that. Um, I also wanted to say, uh, ask Leanne, do you, has anything come since uh, hosting the journey? Um, has the library decided or thought about other kinds of um, programs or services built on that or in addition to? Well, we are always supporting our Senior Connection and they have at least one or two programs a year, including uh, the program I mentioned before, Discover Health. Um, and so this year we are helping uh, with the health fair that will be held at the YMCA, which is in the northern part of our valley, and we're always happy to take medical information uh, to them. And we always share uh, information from NL NNLM uh, when we go to events like this. So um, I'll be reaching probably out to you, Carolyn, to get some more information to share. So um, again, just building on that partnership that we've had. That sounds great. Thank you. Well. Um, 
you can continue to put in uh, your comments or questions in the chat box, but we'll go ahead and move on so that um, we can give you the information to get the CE uh, credits. So Maddie has the link in there. There's a little survey to fill out, and at the end there will be a code uh, so you can apply to the Medical Library Association and get that CE. Um, I also wanted to mention that, um, and you can get this uh, CE whether you listen to the recording or this live session. I also want to mention that our next PNR rendezvous session will be March 20th, where we will hear about changes uh, to our environment and how that can affect our health. Uh, our speaker is going to focus primarily on rural Alaska, but we'll also be talking about um, the effects of climate change for many of us, no matter where we're living. And I hope that you will be able to attend that uh, session. Again, uh, we encourage registration, but it isn't required. And um, you can click on that link to learn more about that particular session. Any other questions that have come in since? No? Okay, well, thank you, everyone. I also want to put in the link. There is our uh, PNR Rendezvous uh, webpage so that you can go and look at past recordings and the future sessions that will be coming up. We really appreciate having Leanne and Kathy filling in for Michelle to present today. This has been a great session, and I hope that all of you found something useful and that you will all consider thinking about hosting the All of Us Journey as well as um, participating with our community engagement network, uh, such as hosting um, uh, book clubs or other kinds of events. So thank you for attending, and we hope to see you uh, next month. And have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.